Welcome back to another edition of Music Monday from the podcast, Nurture the Mind. It is your host, Cole Poots. Um, yeah, doing another Music Monday. This time I am going to pick my own choice of music, of an artist, of a song off of an album that I would really like to check out. And the guy, the artist, is named Ryan Beatty, and this album is called Calico. It was just dropped on April 28th of this year, and I have heard the first single that was called Ribbons, which is a very beautiful song, and I just want to say first and foremost, I ain't trying to disregard people's comments and suggestions that they sent in. I thank you guys. I've gotten a lot of comments. I will get back to falling in reverse and I will check out some of those other artists that I've never heard of. But um, I really wanted to check out Ryan Beatty. I don't know if you guys know him. Um, he did a lot of collaborations with Brockhampton, which is one of my favorite collective groups of all time across all genres, across all artists and musicians. And this dude has a beautiful singing voice. He's also collaborated with Tyler, the creator, and Ribbons, like I said, which was the first single off of this album, is a deeply emotional piece of music. Um, I kind of read the backstory, at least on Apple Music, like the two little paragraphs that it says about this album. And there are themes of Ryan Beatty addressing isolation, being on his own, not necessarily putting himself out there. Um, in Ribbons, he talks about taking a drive on the coast of California and basically reminding himself for why he came out there in the first place, um, probably to get his music career started. So I am just gonna, Ribbons is the first track off of the album. It's only nine tracks, this entire album, nine songs, 34 minutes. I'm just gonna go play the second song which is called Bruises Off the Peach, which I have never heard before. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say he's one of my favorite artists, but I'm very intrigued by him. Again, I think he has a very beautiful voice. I think he's making really good music. So I wanna check out more of this and maybe it'll be helpful for you guys. You know, if you've never heard this artist before, maybe you'll be intrigued, maybe you'll go check him out. I don't know, you guys have given me amazing suggestions and I guess I'm just gonna try and pay back the favor. We'll see how this song goes, but I imagine it's gonna be a good piece of music. Either way, I like emotional stuff. Um, not all the time, but sometimes I get in my feels and that's like the only thing I want to listen to. Right now, today, it's kind of like an overcast day. There's some mist, can't really see the sun, kind of gray. Um, this might be the perfect perfect song for a day like this in Iowa. So without further ado, uh, we're going to get into the song. And like I said, you know, not trying to disregard all the suggestions that you guys sent in. I will get to them. Um, I just figured this week, this is what I wanted to do. So we're going to go over this song. Anyways, Bruises Off the Peach by Ryan Beatty. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. It's spelled B-E-A-T-T-Y off of his newest album titled Calico. Here we go. Did it 
the first listen there and um again i feel like it has uh an emotional tone to it it's a very subtle song you know there's not a whole lot that's going on like other than his voice and i wonder if that was an intentional mood or move to you know really bring in the listener um because you're more so focused on the lyrics than the instrumentation there's really not a whole lot you know that's pulsating in the background uh, I think I'm going to pull up the lyrics to kind of dissect, dissect them a little bit because I had a few thoughts on the lyrics, but they were, again, I always have a hard time the first time I listen to lyrics. It's like, I don't know, my brain is just trying to interpret what I'm hearing, so I, I miss a lot of things. That's why I like to listen to a song twice, which I will probably do here once again. But let's at least go to Genius and bring up some lyrics, because I think there are some things that I noticed that I would like to talk about. So, Ryan Beatty, there we go. Get your newest album, bro. All right, bruises off the peach. Okay, so it starts out with the verse, something's missing, and that's all right, I promise. I'm going to give it until August. I'm not a Christian. I'm careless like a comet. You couldn't have me if you wanted. Uh, the first one that I caught was, I'm going to give it till August. I don't necessarily know what he means by that. Um, seems like he has some type of decision that he would like to make but he's putting it off. And it really made me think of um, just a situation that I went through back in 2021. So the, uh, in the summertime, so actually, yeah, in July, I graduated college. And once I got out of college, the job that I was working at, at that time, I knew it was not gonna be like a career job, a forever job. And so August rolls around right after July and I gave myself uh, this ultimatum or I guess I said, I'm going to give it, you know, at least another year it, when August rolls around next year, meaning going from 2001 to 2022, then I'm going to make a decision. Like if I'm still at the same place, like I need to make some type of change. I didn't stay at that job pretty long after that. I actually left in March of 2022. Um, but for the longest time, I was contemplating whether or not I wanted to stay in Iowa or if I wanted to move to another state. 
Um, I thought after I graduated college, you know, maybe I would make that decision relatively quick. Well, yeah, I, I didn't go out there. I'm still in Iowa, but, you know, got a new job. And so um, that would be interesting to get Ryan Beatty's take about, like, what's he talking about? I'm going to give it until August. Is he thinking about abandoning California? Because if I'm going back to the first song, Ribbons, he talks about, you know, driving on the coast of California. And it basically reminded him of why he came out here in the first place. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know when he wrote this album. This could have been during the pandemic. This could have been, you know, during the height of COVID and Obviously, that was a struggling time for everybody in the fucking world because the world was shut down and our whole means of how we operated in life was put on pause. So I wonder if he had any contemplation of getting out of that state. Um, but usually if you're an artist and you're trying to uh, thrive in the music industry, you have to go to a big city like that. Usually, like at least when you're getting your career started. Like getting it kick started, you gotta be in California, New York, uh, Miami, you know, Chicago, Detroit, like big marketplaces where you're gonna get noticed. If we go into the chorus, it talks about I cut all the bruises off the peach, which is the name of the song, not as beautiful, but still as sweet. There you go again with all your needs. What did it ever have to do with me? And then he repeats it. Um, I guess the interpretation I have of I cut all the bruises off the peach, like is he referencing himself as the peach and cut off all the bruises, meaning like aspects of himself that he needed to fix, that he needed to work on. So not as beautiful, like we all have flaws, we all have insecurities, vulnerabilities, but still as sweet, you know tapping into those things is what makes us a human. But I mean, if you have a bunch of insecurities, I think it is your job to work on them as you become an adult or, you know, people that say, uh, you know, things that happened in their childhood affect the way that they uh, process the world right now. Well, I understand that like, we've all had bad things happen to us, but it is our duty as we age to not blame it on our parents or circumstances or our childhood or how we were raised we got to fix those things ourselves, you know, so we can have a really fucking good life. Um, let's see. The, this annotation is under unreviewed. Beatty had cut off a relationship with a fair weather friend or someone who does not bring any value to him like a bruise on a peach. Though it wasn't an easy decision, he still feels con contented with himself. BD might have chosen a peach as a metaphor because of the saying bruise like a peach. Peaches are extremely delicate and known to be easily bruised. This might reflect BD's sensitive personality, which are shown from the songwriting. I mean, that's an interesting interpretation. Okay, so yeah, if it's some type of bad friendship um that was going on that might have been contentious or wasn't working anymore and it was his duty to you know cut that off and to basically stop the bleeding um but peaches you know like a lot of fruits very delicate you know even if you take an apple that's one that i like to eat and so, sometimes i'm clumsy with it and i drop it on the fucking floor and you pick it back up and there's a gigantic bruise uh you gotta be you gotta be careful with those things very interesting way to put it, you know, especially in a song. Um, I can kind of relate to that, at least when I was younger, I was a, a, a lot more sensitive as a person. And I think that really like kind of hurt me in relationships, you know, taking things personally, um, not having a backbone, not standing up for myself as I have aged. I mean, it's not that I'm perfect with those things, but I try and stick up for myself a lot more and, and cut the people pleasing out. Um, so I guess I could describe that in a metaphor too of cutting the bruises off of the peach. Interesting, interesting. So then you go to the bridge, chorus. I mean, there's, there's really, there's, okay. So there's really what, is there one verse? Then there's the chorus, then there's the bridge and back to the chorus. There's a lot of repeating. So it is, the song is kind of built on the instrumentation, but like I said, it's very subtle. Um, I'm going to give it one more listen, just one more to 
see how I feel about it. Okay, um, not much else to say. I mean, again, with Ryan Beatty, I just think he has a very hypnotic, very um, intriguing voice, like especially when that song did start to pick up, it was more so from his vocals. Um, again, what did he say? It's something like, it started to pick up staring at the ceiling now a million hours past love will always last love will always hold me down what is it all about that's where it really started to pick up and that's where i think maybe i was closing my eyes beforehand but that's where i really started to feel the energy of the song seems like he does take a lot of time to sit in isolation to think about things and i very much resonate with that because I, I do that as well. Um, I'm very much an introvert, an introvert. And because of the nature of my job, being a personal trainer, I have so many conversations and, and it can be deep conversations. It can be small talk, which I don't really like. I think that is equally as draining, you know, when people don't have the ability to think in depth. Um, but having so many conversations throughout the week is really draining. So usually on the weekends, I like to spend a lot of time alone so I can just process and like just recharge. Um, but it just sounds like this song, again, whether it's about a friend, a lover, like life situations, like whatever the specifics are of what he's actually talking about, it seems like he's taken a lot of time to sit back, reflect and think and come up with a clear answer. And I, And that would be my advice to people 
Um, if you are an extrovert, I understand that you get energy, you know, from having conversations with other people, but it would be my advice um, to people out there that think they always constantly need to be surrounded by people, to always be constantly doing something, to always constantly be on the move. I'll tell you that I think everybody on this planet Earth could benefit from doing some type of reflection or doing some type of alone time. It is so freeing to like just enjoy the time that you spend with yourself and you don't have to do anything outrageous or anything crazy, you know, and you form a better relationship with yourself and you actually really start to figure out who you are because when you remove yourself from other people, it's like, okay, like now I, I'm not necessarily asking for validation. I'm not trying to prove myself you know, in the in the midst of being around a crowd of people or trying to win that social interaction or performing in a social interaction, because that's what a lot of people do, right? Is like, instead of having a genuine conversation with somebody where, you know, maybe you're trying to learn or, or figure out more about them, uh, that's what people do is they try and win the conversation. It's like, why are we trying to win conversations? Like, we're just having a conversation. That should not be the goal of having a conversation is to win it. It's like wherever the conversation goes, that is what was intended by the universe, by God, by whatever uh, to happen in that moment in time. So, um, yeah, just by diving through the lyrics, it just seems like he he's a very like reflective, introverted person, uh, definitely feels a lot, um, probably sensitive, probably vulnerable, maybe a little bit emotional. But I do tend to think that most creatives, most musicians most artists are kind of under that umbrella like they all kind of share those personality traits and that's what makes their music so beautiful is because they feel so much and again i can relate to that because i feel like i've been like that in the past maybe even a little bit now but i think i have evolved to the point where i am um a little bit more hardened as an individual where i try to not take things personally anymore which is also a very freeing thing to do but anyways that's the review that's really all i have to say i do think it's a good song uh, i don't i don't think it's as beautiful as ribbons i think ribbons kind of impacted me a little bit more um but maybe after a few more listens i will find more value in this song um it, it, it is a good song it's just it is very subtle there isn't a whole lot to it but there is beauty um behind listening to music like that too like i as you guys have seen with Falling in Reverse or those heavier bands, that's what I generally like to hear is just some type of fucking uh, intense breakdown. But yeah, you, it's like the yin and yang in life. It's it's like the dark and the light is you need a little bit of both to, to, to survive and thrive and, uh, you know, really enjoy listening to as a human. Um, and that's what's beautiful is we all have a bunch of different musical tastes. You should never cut yourself off to only listening to one genre. But um, anyways, as always, if you guys are new to the channel, please like the videos, please subscribe, please comment, um, share the message, the video with a friend. You know, you can post on social media. You can have a conversation with somebody that you know that you think might like my channel, my content, you know, any music heads out there. Again, as always, it really just helps me uh, grow my channel and, and push it out to more potential viewers, you know, that might be interested in music reactions. I certainly know for myself, um, I like watching music reactions. They seem to be just really fucking popular on YouTube and I love talking about music and that's why I go this route and usually my music reactions are the videos that do the best on my channel. So I would just appreciate it if you guys would share the message like the video, subscribe. Like I said, keep commenting, interacting. If you have suggestions or music that you think that I might like, please send it my way. And like I said, over time, I'm going to get to all of these suggestions. I imagine like if uh, the videos get more views, if, if this channel continues to grow, it might be hard to kind of manage that, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna give my best effort to go through everything um, that you guys send my way and, and give you guys shout outs in the videos as well. Um, so yeah, do me a solid and do one of those things if you stop by and watch this video all the way to the end and I will see you guys on the next video uh, next Monday, which would be 
Monday, April 22nd. All right. Thank you guys. As always, love you. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Say happy Mother's Day and give your mother a big kiss.